we find to help us uh, go through the training, which is our uh, first vice district governor elect, Alan King. He's not only been in those positions um, a couple times, uh, he's taught this course before. So we are very, very lucky to have him as our instructor today. So I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to you, Lion Allen, and take it away. Uh, thank you and uh, welcome. And um, a little bit about me, as you guys know, I'm Alan King. Um, I am a correctional lieutenant for the correctional training facility in Soledad, California. I am a second line custody supervisor, but prior to that, I was also an IST sergeant. So part of my job there was training staff. And one of my big things that I do is train people how to teach. Um, it's a 40 hour course on train the trainer. So I have an extensive background in lesson plans and that type of stuff. I'm also a peer support team member. Um, a lot of different things. We rolled out the strategic offender management software program that we are now in versus when we were all using paper C files and we went all electronic based. I was the lead coordinator for that at the institution. That's just a little bit of background. And some of you guys also know that I did 26 years with the volunteer fire department as the last probably eight years as the volunteer fire chief. So that's a little bit about me that you guys probably, some of you may or may not know since we have a few new people that are out there. Um, so I wanna go over tonight is the roles and responsibilities of chairpersons. Some of you have held these roles before. Um, so some of this might be old news and you might learn some new news between this. Um, there's a lot of years of experience across the screen tonight and we wanna share that with you. So. I will call on a few people tonight to also help with this process. So while we do that, I'm going to hit share screen so you can see this screen here, which now let me move other screens around. You guys should all see the screen that's called roles and responsibilities of the zone chairperson, correct? Thumbs up if you see that screen, perfect. So as we become, as incoming zone chairpersons, and a lot of this material is zones, but I want you guys to also know it also ties to region because the region is the next level up. So with that, um, you already have a great deal of knowledge about your zone. You know specifically your zone or geographical location of where you're at. Um, is it possible, however, to be an expert in areas of zone persons? Um, but not all of us have all that same knowledge. So with that, let's get down to the meat and potatoes here. So what we're going to do tonight is we're going to describe what the zone chairperson roles are, what the zone chairperson responsibilities are, and we're also going to locate and explore where all these resources at, your zone person resources and actually other type of resources out there that you need to do that. So what I want to ask, and I guess Linda mute you all, I thought you guys were self-disciplined enough, was what are your roles as a, as a zone chairperson? Can anybody kind of unmute yourself and throw yourself out there? What do you think your roles as a zone chairperson are? A mentor. You're a mentor? Eyes and ears for the governor. There it is right there. You are the eyes and ears to the governor. So that's the next piece here. Oh, I did that. You, the zone chairperson is the link between the clubs and the district. You're the ones that are actually going to be out in those clubs, visiting, talking with those clubs. You know, it's, we, what is our count right now? 45 clubs. It's kind of hard for one person to hit 45 clubs. You know, as, for an example like me that's in King City, it takes me two hours to drive one way just to get to one of our Milpitas on a good day driving. So that's why we have the regions and zone to be really in the boots and the grounds at the club level to help those clubs out. So I also want to ask, can anyone give me an example of how zone chairperson acts as a link between the clubs and the district? Uh, I believe I, I I believe I read this earlier today that our job is to help them uh, uh, determine what the goals are and uh, and how they're doing. 
Exactly. You're also are the spokesperson of the district governor. And also, we're always the spokesperson of our international president. What is international proceeding? What are we pushing? You know, we all know the five pillars of Lions, right? The five initiatives that we're out. So when you're out there talking, is all the clubs working on a service project in one of those five initiatives? For an example, a zone chairperson understands the priorities and needs of the clubs, and they use leverage support for them from the district. At the same time, the zone chairperson understands the goals of the district team. For an example, the membership, the growth, to support the Lions of International Foundation. And you're the leverage support from clubs for these goals. Are we going to go in there and dictate to the clubs? No, it's their club, their way. We're just there to give them the guidance and the support from international or from the district. So you are a member of the global action team. And you're gonna hear a little bit more about the global action team or the GAT team. And if any time we use an acronym, please raise your hand if you do not understand what that acronym is. There will be a test at the end of your LION year of all the acronyms that Lions International uses from LCI to GAT to NAMI to whatever. So that will be, I don't know, should we wait that long to do that test or do it in a couple months? So there's that. So can anyone tell me what the, the role the zone person plays in the global action team? Don't all raise your hand at once or I might have to call on somebody and unmute you. Thinking, we're thinking. You're thinking, good. Uh, I think we're supposed to chair the global advisory meeting. Yes. Good. What we're looking for here is you're a coordinator to use your leadership, membership, and service experience and deploy those experiences into your zones. So that's what we're looking there. So to help bring all this together here, we're going to look at the district cabinet structure and what makes up and where you fall in this first place. So as you know, we have the district governor and under the district governor, we have the global leadership team coordinator. Test question, who is the incoming GLT? Linda. GLT, oh, global yeah. leadership team <laughs> coordinator. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Uh, um, uh, Jeanine Healy is your GLT team team coordinator. Yep. Who is the GMT coordinator, the global membership team coordinator? Bob Stewart? No. Wrong. Okay. There's only one left. Liz. Benji got it. It's Liz Crook is now the global membership team coordinator. Now, who's the global service team coordinator or GST? That's Bob. That's Bob Stewart. <laughs> With them, they make up is what we call the GAT team, the global action team. Then as you look across, then you have the first vice district governor. And who will that be? You. <laughs> uh, the second vice district governor, who will that be? Kevin. That's Kevin. Kevin. And then you see yourselves there as the region chairpersons and zones. You are actually made up as the district governor advisors. Then we have the cabinet treasurer. Who's the cabinet treasurer? Susie. Susie. Or no, Bobby D, I'm sorry. <laughs> Oh, oh, that's right. He's the treasurer. She's the secretary. Yes. Bye. We don't want to give Susie the checkbook. She's scary with money. She's a woman. Yeah. Cabinet Secretary Susie. And who is the immediate past district governor? No. It'll Rick. be Rick. 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 Okay. So with that, as you also see, part of our operations within the district is all the convention committee, information to technology committee, the honorarium, marketing, and others, 
And when the new director comes out, familiarize yourselves with all the other committees. There's a couple that are pretty important committees that I think that should have been listed, and that's um, Budget and Finance Committee and Constitution and Bylaws Committee. There'll be more to come with that. Another great resource that we have to have is our LCIF coordinator. And who is that? So. Yes, yeah, Sue Such is our LCIF yeah. coordinator. Yeah. Then of course, you know, we have different committees and I'm not 100% sure who all those are yet. They're still in the works. And that's our diabetes, environment, hunger relief, childhood cancer and vision. Does anybody have any questions of our district cabinet structure? With none being said. So then we make up the global action team. Um, I'm just gonna briefly do that. We should also be instilling the global action team within the club. Within the club, the club president is the GAT team chairperson. Um, you know, with the smaller clubs, we all wear multiple hats, right? Well, I'm the club president. I'm also the, the, the membership chair for my club. And I'm also the, your first vice district governor elect. So you, we all wear multiple hats. But if you went to Seal Beach, for an example, that's got 200 plus members, they can probably assign somebody to each one of those roles and have subsets within those. Then even at the multiple district level, you have the GLT, the GMT, and the GST. Just for um, Liz actually is coming out of that box called GST multiple district coordinators role and passing that baton off. And we'll pass that information off later of who those three individuals are. And we'll get more of that. So let's get into the roles and responsibilities. So now we're gonna talk about that and one of the things I need you to familiarize yourself is the constitution and bylaws for um, the district and also standard club constitution and bylaws. The reason I say familiarize yourself with those is whenever there is, um, I don't want to say debate, controversy, or there's some issues out there, you at least know that it's covered under some constitution and bylaws when we have to come to some type of a resolution. So the roles and responsibilities um, are outlined in the bylaws. Can you name all the zone chairperson responsibilities? To mentor, be the eyes and the ears, to handle the student speaker contest, to visit the clubs in your zone at least once a quarter, to hold zone meetings, be aware of their activities and fundraisers and try to attend as many as possible and nurture current and future leaders within the clubs. Perfect, there's some of them, yes. Some of them. So there was an activity, but we're, not, we're gonna skip that activity. You guys can work on that on your own on page twos and threes of your participants workbook. So the zone chairperson responsibility in the standard form district bylaws state, the zone chairperson subject to the supervision and the direction of the district governor and or the region chairperson shall be the chief administrative officer in his or her zone. The zone chairperson is the member of the district's global action team, okay? You also actually have a voting right if I'm not mistaken, as a region and zone. You're further the purpose of the association. And we know what the purpose of the association is, right? We serve and the five pillars of the action items. You're also gonna serve as that chairperson to the district advisory committee in his or her zone, as such as chairpersons to call regular meetings of said committees. So what that is, is we would reg would like you to call on quarterly is to meet with your zones. The region chairs need to meet with your zone chairs and your club presidents and club secretaries. Have 
committee meetings or have zone meetings or region meetings um, to share with the club presidents and the secretaries um, what's going on with, as far as the district, you know, do training, is there uh, like maybe LCI training, my lion training, give them the rules, the, the guidance that they need to um, make them successful. You're also going to endeavor to include the GMT, the district coordinator, the GLT coordinator and the GST and special guests to the district's advisory committee to discuss needs related to membership, leadership, development, and service and how these teams may assist those clubs in the zone. So you're gonna be that network. You're gonna be that liaison. So when you see a club that's doing service or maybe struggling with service, that you can reach out to Bob Stewart and say, what can we do to help this club out? You're gonna be that network. I'm missing a page. Uh, but isn't it the governor who really invites those people? It can, it's can both, and we really want to ask the, have the, the, the regions and the zones to do that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I got ahead of myself here. May I interject? Yes, sir. This is, uh, this is uh, Bobby D. As a zone and uh, as a region, as you remember, you are the eyes and ears for the governor, that, which means, and also the eyes and ears for the GAT team which means the GAT team and the governor, they can't be everywhere. So as zones and regions, you are physically interacting with the clubs that you are responsible for. So you have to keep that in mind in regards to uh, what you're doing as a zone in a region. So you're, so you're in essence, um, you know, you are advising the governor of what is going on in your zone and region. Thank and you. with that, and we'll tie it in at the end, is this little tool that Janine's created to basically to keep us all appraised of those. Now that I'm back on. So you're gonna make a report of the district advisory committee meetings and send copies within five days to LCI and to the district governor. Copies should go to the GMT coordinator, the GLT coordinator, the GST and the chairpersons. We also want you to promote the club quality initiative to the clubs within the zone. So I will share what that's at, or if I don't get it out, we'll, we will ensure that we do email that out. One of the other responsibilities too is to find people out there that we can send to the Regional Leadership Institute. So that's where you'll be working with the GLT to Janine, which members out there in a club that we can get to send to training. In coordination with the GMT, the district coordinators, plays an active role in organizing new clubs, keeping informed of the activities and the well-being of all the clubs in your zone. So that's one of the things we have to do is, as a membership team is maybe you're out there in your region or your zone and you're thinking, Maybe we can find a new club over in this section or this uh, area. You are going to be that key piece of help putting that all together for the GMT and for the district governor. You also are going to be coordination with the GLT district coordinator and play an active role in supporting leadership initiatives by informing Lions within the zone about leadership development opportunities at the zone district in the multiple district level. You know, encouraging clubs to come to our monthly GLT training seminars that we're gonna be putting on and it probably gonna be in this format for a while until we can meet together as a group. Um, there's tons of information out there. So we want to encourage the clubs to do that. You know, just because you've been a club president for four or five times, do, does it really mean that they know how to be a club president, and, or is there some tools in the toolbox to guide them, like conflict resolution, um, other types of classes, communication skills, time management. That's one of my big peeves right there is time management. Oh, Annie's joining us. 
In coordination with the GST district coordinator, you're gonna play an active role in promoting the global surface initiatives by informing alliance within the zones, the opportunities in the zones or the district or multiple districts. And you know, like when we're doing a couple of the big district initiatives for global service, like backpacks for kids, that's a district wide service project. We do the Stop Hunger Now's a, a big district initiatives. Those are the type of initiatives that we need to go out there and make sure that the clubs are aware of and educate our members at club level. They're welcome to come and attend these events. And if somebody has something else that's out there that want to hit it off, let's brainstorm and let's work on service. I know Bob Stewart would be lovely to be thinking of different service activities within the district, the, the zones, the regions, or club level to maybe get another club started on something. Okay, so you're gonna supervise the progress of the district, the multiple district, Lions Club International projects in your zone. So we do that. We're gonna to endeavor to have every club within their zone operating under a duly adopt adopted club constitution and bylaws. We want to make sure that our clubs are following Lions Club International bylaws, the, the district bylaws, and also the club bylaws. We don't like clubs out there just doing rogue, whatever they feel like they want to do. There is some guidelines when you take the oath and you take the charter of Lions that we have to accept. Okay, so there's, you know, there's always the ugly thing that sometimes we have to go in and um, question or make point out that clubs need to, there's some guidelines that we need to go through. We also need to promote representation at international district conventions by at least a full quota of the delegates um, within the clubs at your zone level. So later you'll get more information on um, what delegates are, what your delegate counts are at club level. So we know you try to encourage people to come to the district convention to vote. We encourage people to come to the multiple convention or international convention because you do have a voice within that. We want you to visit your clubs regularly of all the clubs um, at least once or if not more during your term of office. And we want you to report your findings to your region chairperson particularly those are the weaknesses or if you think that there's some problems out there, we want to know the good, the bad, the ugly. Is that a better way of saying it? We want to know what's actually out there in those clubs. If there's no bad or whatever, but if there's something out there, please also, you always can call any one of us in confidence and discuss club issues and it stays with amongst us. Um, we don't want to go out there and talk bad about things or bash. We want to make sure that we give the clubs the guidance they need to succeed. Um, perform such other functions and act as required by the International Board of Directors. I'm also going to act in there that you might be asked even by your district governor or the district, you might be asked to uh, be an MC at a cabinet meeting. You might be asked to be an MC at the convention um, at, at one of the mill sittings whenever we get back to that format. So there's other functions you might get be up, asked to be part of. So how many zone chairperson responsibilities did your team? Oh, that's a, that was an exercise you were supposed to have done. So we're going to skip that. So now we want to do is we want to locate and explore some of the chairperson resources that we have out there. So what zone chairperson resources are available to me? Does anybody have any idea where you could go and find some resources for region and zone? LCI website. LCI website. Right. That's where you're gonna find a lot of it. Um, I'm just gonna be the bearer of bad news. The website is not very user friendly at times. It is getting a little better. Um, so sometimes you even just go out there and type in at Google search engine. Sometimes I have a little better luck of finding 
documents in the Google search than I do within LCI search for some reason right now. Um, but those are the tools of the trade. Um, there's tons of resources out there and we're gonna give you a few more of those. So the website, you need to really encourage the use of the website, um, the LCI website, the district website, and of course, you know, we also put stuff out on Facebook. So um, the first resource is the Zone Chairperson eBook. They call it an eBook because it is filled with hyperlinks. It's all throughout the document. Will there'll be a hyperlink, and it will take you to, or it should take you to those resources on those pages. Another resource that I I, I gave you to in your email, it's called the Zone Chairperson Learning Map. I would like you to familiarize yourself with this learning map. And I would also like to familiarize yourself when you get your My Lions login. As you know, when you get your login, you'll have My LCI, My Lion, My Store. I think it's Trends or the, oh, Insight. And then there's also now a school. There's a classroom, it's all web-based type training that will give you lots of more information and you'll get it, it'll keep track of all your certificates and records of what you do for LCI. So familiarize yourself with the ebook. Um, we went through this training. In the e-learning work course, there's also called goal settings, how to create your goals. There's also um, conflict resolution e-learning course. And that's sometimes, a, it's a wonderful course. And maybe at some point we can also get Liz, who's a subject matter expert in that course. And she will guide us through that conflict resolution program. Another one that we're gonna be looking for, and we're gonna need your help, it's called Certified Guiding Lions Program. This is when we instill a new club that we assign two guiding lions to give them the tools and you are the mentor to kind of guide them of what the president's supposed to do, the secretary, the treasurer. Um, basically, you are guiding that club in establishing the club roles and responsibilities, how to get them focused on action planning, goal setting, their long-term goals. What does this club want to do? So that's a guiding lions program. And sometimes we might put a guiding lion if an older club wanted some help to re-energize them. There's all the club officer training. You know, it's all the status quo that some of us have been through, but sometimes it's a good refresher. The president's training, treasurer's, uh, secretary, those type of training, decision making. Uh, another effective one, effective listening skills, how to go in and just listen. Remember, when we go into a club, we're there to listen. We're not there to basically, or to, we just need to hear them out. We're not there to make their decisions for them. We're just there to give them ideas and support. Meeting management, how do we get all this information done? You know, and part of meeting management is also understanding Robert's Rules of Order. How do you conduct a meeting under Robert's Rules of Order so you can keep that meeting going along and it being productive and it doesn't become? You know, how to table an action item or a discussion that's going the wrong way at a meeting? Oh, we'll need to table it or take that information back to the directors or the board of directors and rethink that so you don't have a, you know, a 30-minute meeting that turned into two-hour complaint session. And then we're going to be working on your public speaking skills. Uh, you know, how to get up in front of that microphone in front of 100 plus members and uh, lead us through a meeting. So we also need to look at the different structures. There's also a resource out there called the club health assessment. And we can walk Excuse me. I tried to excuse myself a moment earlier, Alan, but um, uh, the, the tiles that you have on your presentation aren't moving. And, like, I'm taking notes, but you're not keeping up any. There oh, we are. Okay, yeah. okay. I was reading another yeah. handout at the same time, yeah. Well, I and I, I, I um, yeah, 
And now I've lost you again, so I'm not savvy. I'm trying, I'm trying. <laughs> it's okay. But okay, thank you for changing the title. I appreciate it. Okay. So you're gonna do meeting preparation checklists. Uh, there's different minute templates, those type of things. Um, you're gonna be needing to make sure that you log into my LCI reports. You'll be accessing key important data once a month, you'll also be getting a district snapshot of where we are with membership trends. Usually LCI sends that out. If not, one of us will send that out to you as well. So you know, and you know that a club's out there that maybe lost 10 members and you're going to go, wow, what happened with XYZ club? How come we lost 10 members? You need to, um, so you're, that way you're not shocked. On some other um, books or handouts out there, it's called Your Club, Your Way. Um, just, rem you know, they still have the Constitution and bylaws, but, you know, some clubs might not do the pledge, the invocation, or a song. With my club, I do the song at the end. It's usually God Bless America, but everybody does something different. And we're seeing with the newer millennial-type clubs coming in, they kind of are now pushing away from the customary um, type stuff. So that'll be a little different. Um, you have the blueprint for stronger clubs. We have the club quality initiative and we have the certified guiding lines program that I've already talked about. So we have the region and zone chairperson center link. You have your log on and then we're going to be keeping you abreast of the schedules of the upcoming year. You're all encouraged to participate at all the cabinet meetings. Um, and if any time that you're in the area that needs to go want like no more information, you're all welcome to the multiple district um, Council of Governor meetings. And of course, the MD4 convention and all those. The club quality resources. Um, and then of course, we're just promoting harmony amongst chartered clubs. We want to encourage club visitations. Um, does anybody know why we even do club visitations from club to club besides the Granito Award or the Long Tail Short Tail Awards? Oh, call me, call me. <laughs> we want to, we want clubs to go and maybe learn something new that that club does that can help spark interest in your club. Maybe yeah. a club's doing a service project or an action or a, uh, something out there. Well, that's new what, ideas. How do I get that? One of the things that's not listed that I, I've always encouraged is when you get your directory, go down and reach out to all the different committees. Try to invite them to the club. Invite them to a region training. And I'm talking about, call Richard Conrad about the AJ Foundation. Hey, Richard, could you come into my region or zone and bring the AJ for a show and tell and get the club, get the three, four clubs together and go over the AJ. What is the AJ? Um, what is the AJ Foundation? How do we make donations to the AJ? How do you use the, the health screening clinic? Um, those are the things that we need to get back into our clubs. Or he can bring the vision camera down to a club and teach a club how to use it. That's what we talk about. Or like Canines for Companions for Independence. Call one of our representative and bring that into the club as a, a speaker for the evening. Try to put, try to promote programs within our clubs. Your peers, our peers around the room right now, our Brady Bunch here, um, <laughs> we are the best resources. We're here for you. Um, you know, we look back, we have a great bunch of people. We have past district governors, we have past council chairs, we have people that sit on the multiple district level, um, like I'm on marketing communication. I'm also on long range planning for California Alliance and Kevin and I'm not sure what committees he's, oh, he hasn't been uh, tagged your it or voluntold what committees he's on yet. <laughs> Linda was on constitution and bylaws, but I think she got drop kicked. I think because she's gonna become the council secretary yeah, so there is going to be some realignments, but we're there for your resources. Or if you want to know about the, the youth exchange program, 
We got people in contact to do that. One of the ones that I'm working with now, because you guys all know we have a lioness club here that's still here. I'm reaching out to Donna out of my council who was a lioness that actually converted and went, became a lion. So she's one of those assets that we have. We have tons of tools in our toolbox. However, we need to open that toolbox up, pull the drawers out and start picking the correct tools for our assignments. So I'm gonna skip that screen. So we went over what your roles are, some of the responsibilities, and we explored your resources. What I would like to do because, oh damn, I was about 20, 30 minutes, 40 minutes. It's, does anybody have any questions, comments, concerns? I think it's a small enough room. I see Bob Stewart raising his hand. Go ahead, Bob, unmute yourself. Thank you, Ellen. Um, one thing I want to emphasize, and it's based on uh, an experience that we uh, had in our district a couple of years ago. Uh, a, a zone chair thought it was um, their responsibility when they met with the clubs in their zone to criticize the clubs, find areas that they could improve upon. And this did not go over well with the clubs that were visited. Instead, I would suggest that you plan on saying something nice to each club, stroke the club, um, cheerlead the club. Yep. Listen, and if, you, if, if there is something that uh, can be, uh, that's broken that needs to be fixed or that can be improved upon, forward it back and and uh, let's discuss it internally and come up with a strategy for going back to the club. But don't take on the personal criticism or improvement counseling yourself. Um, Is that, I, that uh, what the conflict forums are all about though, Lion Bob? I mean, isn't it a guided aspect when you're trying to do a zone meeting? and get to the bottom of things, or you're talking about whenever you do a visitation. Thank you. Oh. I'm, yeah, I'm talking about when you visit the clubs in your zone, as a zone chair, and you visit them at least once a quarter. Correct, okay. Okay, in those interactions, in the club meeting, do not criticize the club. Oh, where are your meeting uh, agendas. You need to have meeting agendas. This is no good club. That sort of thing. Don't go there. Don't do that. Why haven't Just, you reported? <laughs> yes. Um, Every I club thought. does things differently. Correct. And we'll submit it back to you and say, geez, you know, I was there and correct. Another task that you might be tasked with is also when the district governor or the team starts doing our visitations we ask that you join in with those visitations within your region or zone. Because remember, you are the eyes and ears. You're that person that's going to greet us and be that key link. Um, by protocol, it is customary that the zone chairperson will introduce the region chair. The region okay. chair will introduce the club, the district governor. Right. During the district governor's visitation, if one of us is there, usually the cabinet secretary will be right alongside of Linda's right hand, will mm -hmm. be introduced to peddle the uh, district pins and directories and membership or LCI type stuff that needs to be handled, internal administrative stuff. But if one of us, Kevin or I are there, then Linda will introduce us as well. So. Kind of familiarize yourself with our bios a little bit. I don't expect you when we come, or my personal, I don't know what Linda does, that you need to sit there and read our bio. But just a <laughs> real brief snapshot of a short introduction. I mean, we've heard some people go and read their bios that could be two pages long. You know, <laughs> some of the night meetings, you know, one two minute introduction and you're done, move on. But that is customary as we go as the protocol. I just had to throw that back in there. Does anybody else want to raise their hand? Oh, Susie's raising her hand. She's being all polite. 
Unmute yourself, Susie. Unmute yourself, Susie. <clears throat> there. One of the things I just thought of is when, as a zone or region, when you go to the club, you have a certain bit of power. And like Bob Stewart said, you don't go in to correct or make observations. I hear you. Yeah, we, we can't hear you. Too. Susie, we cannot hear you. Oh. Can you hear me now? Better. Um, okay, never mind. That's okay. Yeah, being closer was better. Talk to us. Okay. When you go to a club as a zone or region, you have a certain bit of power and authority. And as Bob Stewart said, it's not to go in and criticize and critique what the club has got set up. But we have to have the presidents of the clubs also understand you're coming in as a representative of the district governor. You do have a little bit of authority. You are allowed to be there. And I think that's something that needs to kind of get out to the club presidents, that you guys are valuable. You are the ears of the governor. That's yeah. all. And what she's saying is, is region or zones, you know, when you come into a club, you're there as a representative of the district. You're there to give them the support and guidance or the resources they need to be successful. You know, we don't take over a club. We're not there as empowerment. You're just the eyes and ears, or if they need help, guidance, that's all we're there for. Another thing too is as cabinet team members, we're not allowed to steal the bell, the banner, the gavel when we're on an official visit. The car. Or the oh. car, car 54, you can't steal it. You know, as much as we'd like to, we're there professionally. Um, but if you're there as a club representative, I don't know. But as a representative as a region zone, I would probably stay clear of that right. stuff. <laughs> yeah, just stay clear. <laughs> Nobody would ever do that. <laughs> yeah, that poor car got disappeared for a while. Some of you are aware of that. It's right there. Oh, what? <laughs> totally surrounded by lions. <laughs> are you guys all ready for your to take the oath whenever we do this whether in person and or virtual absolutely okay. hey, hey, hey alan yes are, are you to do anything on cyber clubs and specialty clubs we can work on that let's we can talk yeah. about that offline and get a group together all right excellent yeah uh, a suggestion i have is each of the zones uh, send an email and introduce yourself to your clubs. Do it this week. And as one um, uh, part of the introduction of yourself to the clubs, let them know that there's a birthday coming up on June 27th. And it happens to be Helen Keller's 140th birthday. So remind them that it's Helen Keller Day this Saturday. Introduce yourselves as the zone chair and uh, and let's knock it out of the park this year. Um, and we will get out this week too. I just did a snapshot of the club officers that we have on file so far. I know that uh, Susie and Bobby D and Linda has been aggressively reaching out to some, I think there's a what, 14 or 15 clubs we're still trying to ascertain that information. I know a couple clubs that I saw down the list has probably bounced their usernames and passwords in my LCI. For with that in mind, we're going to have to do a paper PU 101. When that gets filled out, that needs to go to Linda or to Susie so they can email that to LCI and get the club officers reestablished in the computer. Um, as I mentioned before, on July 1st or thereabouts, you will all receive an email from my LCI um, with basically saying that you, your usernames and password or your username or your titles or roles have been changed. I encourage you to look for that. Um, I would also make sure that you guys check your, uh, if you're using Google Mail or some of these other ones, I've noticed that some emails go to the trash can or the spam filter. So be mindful that there's tons of emails going out. 
Um, we also want to continue right now the bi-monthly um, email blast that we're sending out about every sun every other Sunday. So Susie and I will continue that that. So when you have information, please forward that to Susie and I, and we'll get it embedded in there and get those dates of events and the calendar listed. Um, make sure that you send those to us in a Word document or a clean PDF document, um, and we will convert it to PDF and embed those. Also, encourage us and email us pictures of clubs that are doing projects or doing something, because we started off with featuring a club a week when we catch it. And the only way Judy and I were catching that information is what people post on Facebook. So we will try to, you know, not all the clubs have a Facebook uh, page yet. So uh, we want to encourage that, that every club should have a Facebook page and like each other, because mm -hmm. I think that's a really good, easy platform for our public relations and communicate. Um, we want to feature clubs every week. We want to see, like right now, and I don't know if anybody notices, we've got a, the smallest club in our district right now is probably our biggest shining star. Does anybody know what club that is? Go ahead. <laughs> you want to share it? The shining star of which club? The smallest club in our district. And what club is that, Janine? Unmute yourself. I would say that it's actually a branch club. It is a branch club. And which branch is it? It's uh, the Wings of Light. Oh. Exactly. Yeah. Selena so host. Up. Right. Selena's host, Wings of Light. Is that correct name? Wings of yes. Light? Yes. Yes. So they're they're the question, awesome. What is the minimum number of members you need for a branch club? Does anybody have that answer? Five. Sorry. Uh -huh. <laughs> Five. So reach out there. If you start seeing something, there's nothing wrong with starting a branch club. And we got the cyber club. And I'll tell you, if anybody's watching Facebook, the Selena's host skill or the Wings of Light have been rocking it out of the park right now. So Yeah, but it's a way to grow the club too. Come on. It it's is. not undermining another club because we got to shift that and put it into new blood, and that that would be fun, guys. It would be, you know. Fun. And the fun, thing fun, is, fun. is, if you have a night meeting and you got five people that can't meet at night, but they can meet on Saturday morning, there's a branch club, right? Right. Perfect. Good Liz, way to put it. Thank you. Do you have any inspiring thoughts for us tonight, Liz? And may I say something? Uh, another club that is a rising star, the mm -hmm. Kai uh, Club, uh, they are, have a lot of young members, and boy, their pr presentations are just outstanding. And I plan on seeing how much of their talent I can utilize uh, this coming year. Um, go ahead, Liz. You're up. I just um, want to say that starting that Wings of Light Branch Club was so easy. I just, my girlfriend and I went out and delivered um, meals at Thanksgiving for the Carmel Host Lions Club. We went out to lunch afterwards. We talked about, gosh, we could do this. We've got friends and the rest is history. And we're up to um, 10, soon to be 11 members now. They've done amazing stuff. And right now, actually Saturday, they met in one of their members driveway to draft out their application to the Monterey Gives grant, they're asking for ten thousand dollars. So, wow. it, they're they're killing me. <laughs> it's wow. too much fun. Wow. Yep. yep. <laughs> Can I ask how much focus the? Actually, I guess it would be LCI itself, but also our district will be putting on reporting online through LCI for each event? So Excellent. how that happens will be the clubs needs to, we need to as regions and zone, let me backtrack, especially starting July 1st, we need to ensure that all the clubs are logged in and reporting all their service and any activities through MyLion. 
And part of that reporting tool is how much money has been collected through donations, how much money you give back out in donations, how many service hours um, your club is doing for an event. You know, you get 10 members at two hours, there's 20 hours of service credit. And that's how that builds that, the, that time up. So it's the club's responsibility. As regions and zones, you have no data entry into LCI or My Lion. Your job is to review the data and then proceed from there. You know, if you see a club that's not reporting, that's when you would call that club and say, I notice you haven't reported for a couple months. Okay, that's our job is to guide them to ensure that they're reporting correctly and give them the tools. Does that answer your question, Candace? Yep. On that, on that note, I just wanted to say that I'm proposing um, a change in how the Granito points are reported. And rather than reporting to a Granito chair, um, we're going to be basing it on club reporting to my LCI um, attendance sheets at cabinet meetings at USA Canada forum at leadership institutes and that sort of thing and I'll be meeting in the next week to go over that uh, reporting by point system and that will be in the directory but we'll we'll send that out to you as soon as we you know get it finalized but it was borrowed from another district and I was very impressed with how balanced the reporting was and it's all dependent on clubs reporting to my LCI and other things rather than sending an email to somebody and you thought you sent it but you didn't or you know it gets lost in the email and it doesn't get counted so eliminating that by the re club responsibility to make sure that it's reported it also encourages clubs to report their activities because now it's going to count towards the uh, Granito Award. So, so that's one of our messages when you're out there that if they really want to, or the Granito runner-ups or the ones that really participate in the Granito, that they're going to have to uh, put all their information in my line and my LCI to do that. Is there any final questions? We're at the 54. Four minutes yeah, we're, we're starting to yeah we're starting to uh, get close to the top of the hour so uh, there there is a few things that I'd like to um, ask the group first of all all you regions and chair and zone chairs do you know your clubs no Annie black Lions. okay Annie I, I will contact you separately with that and give you that information Good question. Um, Thank you. I, I would like the regions and zones, this is your first homework assignment. I would like you to contact one another and introduce yourselves and, and talk. Um, Lotus, I know that right now you don't have a, a, a region chair. So we'll set up something separate where we will make sure that you have somebody that will be your mentor in the in the interim until someone is is uh placed there but we want you guys to talk because communication is going to be very important over the the course of this next year and if you don't know these folks you need to you need to get comfortable so give them a call tell them who you are get to know them that's your number one Yay. thing Thank number you. two um uh Line Allen was discussing the fact that we have quite a few clubs that have not reported their membership or their, their new officers for next year. And um, we might have to go to a paper trail, but if they submit it within the next couple days, we can get that resolved. So um, if you are able uh, to give these folks a call, Carmel Host, Fort Ord Veterans, Greenfield, Hollister, Morgan Hill, San Jose Japantown, San Jose Cases on Unity. I'm going to pronounce that right. Uh, San Jose Pioneer, Santa, uh, Santa Clara Host, 
Silicon Valley so Scholars Cyber, Soledad, and Sunnyvale Everest are still have not um, turned in their officers. It would be a great benefit um, to uh, Linda and her cabinet, because they're still trying to get their um, uh, directory together, uh, to have this information. It needs to be updated. Okay. Yes, Is oh, Susie? I got my names. Yeah. Susie, oh, you're, you're on mute. I'm trying to unmute. unmute. Okay. Susie, Bobby needs to be muted. I am oh. There, okay. I'll try it. Oh, it's not better. She's too close to the mic. No, I don't think her computer has the microphone set up, maybe. I'll talk to offline, Okay. Okay. The, we'll take it offline. Um, the, one of the last things that, I, that I'd like to say is the, the next part is going to be really important of your training, and that is we're going to go have Alan uh, walk through uh, actually going into um, my LCI and running through what you're going to be seeing on my LCI. Now, if yeah, because there, there's ways that you can go in and look at your look at your clubs. You can run reports. You can monitor membership. There's a lot of things that's really important to, to be able to do there. So that's going to be our next our next training. Okay. Sweet. Yay. Okay. Now you can go ahead and set up your user ID if you are not already on my lion. You can go ahead and do that now. You need your membership number uh, to do that for the very first time. After that, you can set up your user ID as you want. And, um, you know, you can get that membership number from me or from your club secretary if you don't know your membership number, okay? Um, but go ahead and set that up. You won't see your information as relevant to your club until after it's activated at the beginning of the launch year. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. Stan, if we're already uh, club secretary, we have access to my LCI. Do we need a new account? No. 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 Okay. I just we just want you know, uh, we are realistic and we understand that uh, some people have been longtime lions, but they have not been using my lion, and we want you to become comfortable with that. So we want you to be able to go into my lion to, uh, to log your own activities and your club activities. And, you, and actually, as you can go in and log your region and zone activities as well. But when you're going in and researching what your clubs are doing in your zones or your region, you need to do that through, the my, through my LCI, exact same log on. And then we'll change what you what you'll do is you'll get multiple roles and we'll teach you how to go and change your roles from club president to region chair or first vice presidents and all that. Bob Bob has the system to raise. Bob Younger. Okay. Is there anything else? Otherwise, I'm going to wish everybody a wonderful uh, evening and thank you so much for your time and thank your you. patience and and we look forward to all your good work. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.